Growing up buying Star Wars toys, we loved those pictures of Star Wars toys on the box. Sometimes we even saw kids playing with the toys. Sometimes it's just a hand. And you know, those pictures just didn't appear out anywhere. No, they were photographed before putting on the box. Let's take a closer look. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you. Back from L.A. Whew. Back ready to do some videos. Hope you guys enjoyed some of the classic videos last week. There was a couple of new ones thrown in there also. But we're back now with new videos all this week. So let's get on with it and talk about the box art. Photographs used for Star Wars toys. We're going to look at the actual photos that was put on the box sometimes things were brushed out some things was cut out so it would fit nicely on the box and we've got a lot of them to look at so i'm not going to waste any more of your time let's start with i was going to call it a mini rig is it a mini no it's not a mini rig i always get these mix they're not mini rigs kind of more like an accessory it's one of the cannons let's take a look here it is the tripod laser cannon this thing was a cool little accessory to have, especially during the Empire era. And you had your Hoth play sets and everything. You kind of, this was a great little addition. But here's the photo used. As you can see, it's got Snowtrooper right there. Actually has one in the background. Has some heels and everything. Looks like their own Hoth. And here's some, here's some photos of them with just hands. I don't know who the hands belong to. It looks like a kid hand. I could be wrong, but it could be a little person. A dwarf's. I don't think I'm supposed to say the M word, but it could be someone else. But I think it's a little kid hand. Who knows? It could be the son of the photographer. I'm not really sure. And here's the box right here. As you can see, there it is. This The trooper with the cannon, the other trooper in the background. And there's some hands showing how to work it. This is the tripod laser cannon toy. I don't understand why they put toy on this thing. Like, we couldn't figure that out. Oh, I didn't know this was a toy. I thought it was a real laser cannon. It's not. It's not a real laser cannon. But that's the artwork there. And let's look at another. At first, you might be a little bit confused. What is this picture of a stormtrooper? He's like in some kind of, I don't know, some kind of dark room with a big yellow sun behind him. What is going on here? I don't remember this on a Star Wars package. Well, it was on a Star Wars package, at least for a couple years. Uh, that was until it was replaced around, I think, 42C of the Empire Strikes Back card. But where? You know it's not on the front of the card. It was on the back of the card, as you can see here. I know it's kind of small to see, but yes, it is here. See, there's the Stormtrooper in front of that little sun. And here he is on the Empire card with the updated where they put them all standing up next to each other. Have you ever noticed number 45, the Stormtrooper that we're talking about here? He doesn't have the Stormtrooper gun. He has like the longer gun uh, that maybe the Hoth Trooper came with. And that's why back in the 90s when people were really starting getting into vintage collecting Star Wars toys, it was hard to match up what weapons went to who. There was no like database website you could look at. There were some websites here and there. Some of them would be different. Sometimes people just didn't know what gun. You know, some of the images that Kenner used didn't have the right gun. Hell, even uh, one of the Stormtroopers has a Chewbacca gun on the Landspeeder box. I believe it's the Landspeeder box, isn't it? Anyway, let's look at another photo art. And here's one that was used for the X-Wing Fighter for the Micro Collection. If you didn't have the Micro Collection growing up, you missed out on a really fun toy line. They were really fun. And here's Luke on some kind of hot planet. Doesn't really like Tatooine, but it could be. Doesn't look like Dagobah, that's for sure. And here's another photo where it shows the ship crash. Because that's what they did with these micros. You had a little button, you push them, and they would break apart. It was a lot of fun. And both photos, you can see here, was used for the box. Those, again, those micro machine collection toys, the play sets and everything, yeah, they weren't as fun as the original Star Wars toys, but they, I mean, action figures, but they were still fun. I don't, I'm sad that that line never really took off. It was a lot of fun. But let's look at photographs used for the Job of the Hut box. Here's the standard photo that everyone knows is on the front of the box. It's the main photo. Instead of Leia as a president, you have Luke, and who's looking on? You got Celestius Crumb sitting right there at the gut of Jaw Jaw. Jop, I was going to say Jar Jar, sitting at the gut of Jabba the Hutt. You got, I see, I see a squid head back there, Grimorian Guard, and a Biff Fatuna right there. Uh, here's a close-up photo of someone using the hand, showing that the head does turn, making the whip swing back and forth to knock over your loose Skywalker. 
And here's a few pictures of the inside of the dungeon. Look at there. There's 3PO, Leia in her Bosch outfit, and Lando in his guard skiff outfit. Those are really cool. As you can see in the box, this is how it appears on the box. I think we all, this is a guy, kind of all the boxes. This is probably one of the most iconic boxes. Which raises the question, is Jabba the Hutt an action figure? Yes, he's an action figure. He's intelligent. He, Wampa, Tauntaun, not action figures. They're creatures. Chewbacca talks and everything. He has a mind of his own. He's smart. You can't even use a Jedi mind trick on him. Now, let's look at a photo that was used for 1981. 1981? 1981, I think it was 1982, now I think about it. 1982 Toy Fair catalog that showed all the current Star Wars figures or one that was going to be added to the current line that year. Let's take a look. Here's the photo right here. They're all on this little red carpet stand. They look really nice. And here's the photo used in the catalog. Again, I believe this is the 1982 catalog. Could be 81, but I'm pretty sure it's 82. I know, I should have remembered that when I looked it up. Now let's go back to one of the original cards. Let's look at Greedo. We all know Greedo is in his brown vest, but the figure has him in green. Don't get me started. But let's look at the card. Here's the photo that was used. Here's Greedo in front of a green screen. Got his gun pointed at the captain of the Falcon, Han Solo. And here, how, and here is how it appeared on the card. It looks really cool if you ask me. That's a great looking Greedo. The figure and the card. But what about his buddy, Walrus Man? These two were like best friends ever. So let's take a look at it. And here it is in a frame. As you can see, there's one of those little rat creatures next to him. And as you can see on the card, he's not even totally airbrushed out. You can kind of see his fingernails. I did a whole video on that because I was scraping the bottom of the barrel one day. But there's Walrus Man. Photos wasn't just action figure related. Nope, even the role playing stuff like the lightsaber. Let's look at the good lightsabers, the one released from Empire and Onward that was plastic and he swung them and he said, ooh, ooh, ooh. they were awesome. Let's take a look at the photo art for them. Here's a little boy. He's excited because he's got a lightsaber. He's not excited that his mom gave him a bowl haircut, but he is excited about that lightsaber. As you can see, they airbrushed in a little street thing to make it look like it's swinging, I guess. And here's two young lads fighting, fighting it out. One looks like a purple lightsaber, but it's not. Now, I'm not sure where they reuse this photo. I couldn't find a reference photo for it. But man, ain't that cool. That looks awesome. That'll look cool hanging on a wall. But as you can see here, this photo was used for the box that would go to the stores that they would put the lightsabers in. But what about that inflatable lightsaber? <sighs> what marketing geniuses came up with that? This was so bad, it came with a patch because they knew kids was going to pop it. <sighs> Let's take a look. And here's just the lightsaber itself. Not really much I can add to this picture. But here's two young fellows fighting, and they would appear on the box. Look at them. They're having a lot of fun. And this guy right here is showing off his Jedi skills. And here he is again. Whoa, look at those pants. Remember, we used to wear plaid pants in the 70s. We did. But now when you look at the box, you'll know at least one of the kids had plaid pants. Even if they did, try to cover it up. And as long as we're looking at this picture... Look at Luke Skywalker. They br they airbrushed out his gun and put a lightsaber in his hand. And just for the fun of it, I just wanted to look at this doofus looking kid. He says he's going to help Luke Skywalker and Han Solo battle Darth Vader with an inflatable lightsaber. No, he's not because as soon as he hits something, it's going to pop and he's going to cry and run to his room. Let's move on from lightsabers and let's take a look at mini rigs. Here's the MLC-3 mobile laser cannon. First picture we up, we have some rebel soldiers getting into this mini rig. Han and Leia look on. And here's a general Han Solo looking and making fun of the guy inside, saying, oh man, what a dork, he has to ride around in this thing. And here's a rebel soldier getting ready to get crushed by an ad at. And it shows you right here that the cannon goes up and down. And here's the box so you can see how they use the photos for it. Another one that some may count as a mini rig, but it's not, is the cannon from Hoth. Another little fun accessory toy if you had a lot of Hoth stuff. Let's take a look. Here's two rebel soldiers just taking it easy before they get stomped on by an ad at And as you can see here, you can push a button and blow it apart. Or you can swivel it left to right. Or up and down. That's one lucky hand model. He gets to play with Star Wars toys. But here's a look at the box. 
So you can kind of see how the photos were used. What nice hands that kid had. That might have been Ray McKinney, one of the best hand models ever in the business. Let's move on and look at another. This is a photo that was going to be used for one of the Kenner catalogs for 1980 for the Empire Strikes Back line. As you can see, it shows the unreleased second series of large size action figures. Luke Bespin, Leia Bespin, Lando, Han Hall, and there's Darth Vader that did get released. Now let's look at a photo that was used for Lobot, but only used for Tri-Logo. Did you know the picture of Lobot is different on the Tri-Logo card than the regular release US card? Let's take a look at that. Here's the photo that was used. Lobot standing in front of Bespin security guards. And you're thinking, hey, that's what they use for the Kenner card. I know that. You'll be wrong, because you can see here he's standing in front of Stormtroopers. But the Tri-Logo card used them standing in front of Bespin guards. I'm not sure why they changed this. Maybe because the photo area was a little smaller on the Tri-Logo card. It just fit better on the card. You know one of the action figures has a picture of 3PO with no head? Yes. Reese. Okay, I'm technically kind of teasing you here, but let's take a look. Here's the image used for Reese. As you can see, they had to airbrush out 3PO's head and some of his arm. Let's look at the card. Can't even tell he's there. But it's right there. If you can see the whole photo, you can see his chest and everything. Again, they had to airbrush out his head and his arm to fit. And don't worry. Don't get upset. I know you're getting upset and says, Junk man? Junk man? Where's the Ewok love? Well, here's some Ewok love. Here's another hand model showing us how a hang glider can fly around an Ewok. And here he is again showing how the Ewok fits onto the hang glider. And here he is gripping some balls. And if you're curious how it looked on the box, here it is right here. It could have been a hand model. My mom always talked about how soft and milky white my hands were. Let's look at one more. For this one, we're going to go to Brazil for Gaslight. Or the gas leak. We're going to look at what they call the ASAX, but we all know it as the X-Wing. Here's the photo that was used for the box. I like that groovy, smoky background. Here it is up close so you can get a better look at it. Obi-Wan Kenobi's got his lightsaber out. I guess he's going to have a fight with Yoda or something, maybe some training. And Yoda's like, I don't need no lightsaber, I got a snake. And here's a look at the box. I don't know why they put that big photo of Luke Skywalker and 3 and R2 in the box. It just takes away from the nice looking box. But they did it. Well, that's it. That's photo art that was used to put on the Star Wars toy boxes. Hope you enjoyed that video because I love showing them to you. Well, let me know what you think about this or whatever else you want to tell me in the comments below. And as always, I want to tell you about my content and subscribe to the channel. Hey, jump <laughs> that channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.